Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach, and you're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Up next, we've got a good one on tap between the visiting Houston Texans and the New England Patriots. With that, let's head on up to Foxborough. Standing by with the call at Gillette Stadium, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. A moment ago, the pride of Massachusetts, the Patriots, introduced to this, as always, sold-out crowd as they get set to go head-to-head -head with the Houston Texans. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Steven Goskowski now has this one teed up, and we are underway from Gillette Stadium. This one fielded at the five. <laughs> And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. Leading them out, Deshaun Watson. This is a sight that NFL fans everywhere are happy to see his return to the playing field. What a start to his NFL career as a rookie. 19 touchdown passes in just six starts. That was more touchdowns than Joe Flacco, Tyrod Taylor, or Marcus Mariota, and Houston went 1-8 and eight after losing him, which lent credence to many people saying he should have been the rookie of the year based on his play and how Houston did without him. Play action for Miller, now Watson. He's got it complete to Braxton Miller. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45. And even 20 yards and a first down on the game's very first play. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. carry for Lamar Miller and he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five and the big boys up front in the trenches what do you think of the O-line Charles I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive they know what the man next to them is going to do at all times and they operate as a terrific unit It's Watson. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And he's brought down. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man. -man. Maybe needs some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. This is Alfred Blue, and he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. Just what you want on a first down run, call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early.
They keep it on the ground. This time, it's Miller. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say, play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Watson on third down. For the left side, complete. It's Griffin. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive. And they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them. And now, I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. It makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. you still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance. Time. This is the running back. Move. And he's brought down. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. The Texans with the first opportunity now from the red zone. They come up first and 10 at the 16. From the red zone now, Watson firing quickly here, and that's complete. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressive. Let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. Here's Watson. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. And quickly, let's check out the New England defense. Dante Hightower is a prototypical run-stuffing inside linebacker who has the ability to go to the edge and rush the passer. And there's no better example than when he had the strip sack against Matt Ryan in Super Bowl 51. This will be play number nine coming up on this relatively long opening drive as they look to convert on third down. Watson. And that is incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short. They elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short. But you got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. Kaimi Fairbear now to attempt the Texan field goal from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Fairbear able to put this one through, and it's now 3 0 Texans. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11 play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder. Are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. Now it's Patterson. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So here come the Patriots now to take over on offense. Their 41-year-old quarterback 
Jack leading them out there in his 19th season out of Michigan, the great Tom Brady. Normally, I'm not crazy about reciting numbers about a player, but when you talk about a guy named Tom Brady who's playing at the highest level in his 40s, let's go ahead and do it. 4,500 yards passing, 32 touchdowns, eight interceptions, a third MVP award. These are not numbers you associate with a player playing in the NFL in his 40s. Brady and the Patriots now first and 10 at their own 26. 20, 20. They'll run it here. This is James White. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. A play fake for Burkhead. Now Brady. Gronkowski got it on the crossing route. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Well, there it is, partner. Brady to Gronk. Their first connection of the game. You think those two often in sync? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any question about it. And look, we know Gronk has a whole lot of fun, but he's deadly serious about his football, as is Tom Brady. Two great competitors, two fantastic players. On first and ten, here's Brady. Going to air it out deep for Gronkowski. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 27. He was looking for Gronk that time. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down the score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Well, what do you think? You get the ball off the turnover near the middle of the field. You take a shot here in the first play? You know I'm big on that. I love when I have great field position. After a turnover, I feel like I might have a little bit off balance. I prefer to take a shot, but a lot of coaches will tell you you only do it if you trust the guy who's got the football in his hands. Meaning, if it's not there, he won't force it downfield and maybe turn into an interception. He'll go to the check down, go to a second option, and go ahead and take the play that's in front of him. After the interception, here's Watson. And this will complete to Will Fuller. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Now Watson, caught here by Griffin. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets them a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together, just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Down, it's Watson. Caught left side, Hopkins. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. Watson to Hopkins for a huge hookup. 42 yards. 
This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions. In the blink of an eye, they've got it first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it? For them to get downfield that quickly. And now first and goal, expect them attack right here on this play. Try and run for it with Miller. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Flushed out right. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. Nice job there defensively. A great time to dial up a blitz. And give him credit under center instead of throwing it away. Actually, a pretty good job of getting past the line of scrimmage, not losing yardage. And the question now, can the Patriot defense hold firm again on third and goal? Watson on third and goal. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Braxton Miller from three yards out. And the Texans will extend their lead. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And the lead grows to 10-0. That time, a six-play drive. And the result, a Houston touchdown. Fairbairn now to kick this one away. Now it's Patterson. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. So Brady and the Pats take over first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Got a man complete. It's Chris Hogan. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 14 yards is the pickup there on a New England first down. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but 
the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they showed to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. As the offensive starters pop up on your screen, Charles, let me ask you, Chris Hogan, what does he bring to this offense? A guy that you look at and really don't circle in your game plan. If there's other guys that you look at, then you realize this guy can do damage. Finds his way open on almost every snap. And they'll run it here. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. And the big meet on the D-line. We'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Fourth down on now is the lefty Ryan Allen to punt. Back deep for the Texans, Will Fuller. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. And here comes the Texans now. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Second down, here's Watson. Flush to his right. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. Give him 17 on the pick up there, and the Texans also get a new set of downs. Now whistles as time has run out on this first quarter. 10-zip our score, and we'll return to Foxborough after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's Texans football as we get going in quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. Watson now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. 8 of 10. It's first down. Ten, back, 
Here's a give to Miller. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. A good run there on right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. That reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009 2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49 yard line. Hey, 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 hey. Blue Blue <laughs> they go play action here on first down. He'll buy some time right. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Holding offense. So apparently some grabbing Still of the jersey down. there on the O-line. Yeah, just look in the interior, and that's where the penalty occurred. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Off of play action, it's Watson. Going deep for Hopkins. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. But one thing's for sure, when you get a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you're going to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. field strike he digs them part way out of the hole that they're in it's an eight yard gain and it makes it third and 12. this drive is turning to an extended one and and the guy carrying the ball he's becoming more like a body blows guy every carry is putting some damage on the defense so after a while i'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him the texans on third down they've been okay two for three thus far this is third down and 12. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Try to lay one up deep. And incomplete, almost intercepted. Had a great shot of picking that off in the end zone. And now fourth down. The pressure there was definitely enough to make him alter his throw because if he had had time, he had a man wide open and had a chance to get it to him. Yeah, I think if he had just another split second, that's a completion and a touchdown. Fourth down, the Texans will turn it over to the active leader in punting yards, and that's Shane Leckler. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, but which guy's going to step forward and say, okay, let's get this thing done. Because within that unit of 11, sometimes one guy can make a big time play and break through the barrier. Brady and the Patriots now, first and 10 at their own 18. Now a play fake here on first down. Allen has it, left side. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily, put it 
it on him when your other targets aren't open. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. He lost two there, and it's third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. By 20! By 20! There's a deck! Throwing is Brady on third down. And able to connect with Barrios. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. A good pick up there, 26 yards. I've got to make sure that I don't take Tom Brady's greatness for granted, that we make it routine. How about that throw right there? Yeah. Another, another great completion. And you know one area where he honed his throwing? He was a catcher in high school. He was actually drafted by the Expos in 1995 in the 18th round. Wow, that would have been something to see him behind the dish. Think he gunned down a few guys? Gunned down a few guys trying to steal second. That would have been fun to watch. Throwing on first down is Brady. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. Well, right now, Charles, we sit in the thick of preseason, and of course, that means we're in the thick of fantasy football draft season. Yes. So, you know, the top five, it's good to have David Johnson back, Le'Veon Bell, of course, Gurley, Ezekiel Elliott, Antonio Brown, all studs. Who would you take number one in a fantasy draft? Oh, that's a tough one, but I would look at Todd Gurley and David Johnson as my top two picks. Johnson missed all of last season with a wrist injury, and with potentially a rookie quarterback there and a little bit of a rebuild, he may get more work than he could possibly handle. Todd Gurley was a beast for L.A. last year, running it and catching it. But how about a rookie by the name of Saquon Barkley yes. with the Giants? I think he'll get a ton of touches. And Alvin Kamara, he showed what he could do last year, both running it and catching it. And don't forget, returning it as well. And on third and three, they decided to go with a dime package. Yeah. Six DBs. Yeah, you're right. They've got six out there. 20, 20. Brady going to try and throw on third down. Over the middle, he gets it to Barrios. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 45-yard line. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On play action, now Brady. And that's complete to the right side, it's Allen. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that. But it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. New England on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and six. 
Here's Brady. That's the right side here, complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30 yard line. His first catch of the game, good for 11. He had a first down. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it. Now the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Wait, 20. Wait, 20. Wait, 10. Brady now on first down. Goes right side, complete to Graham. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover it? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. The Patriots into the red zone for the first time. It's first and 10 from the 12. 20! 20! Brady now on first down. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off here by Aaron Colvin. And the return will stop him well inside their own 20 at the 15-yard line. Well, CD, regular season inching closer. You know, looking at the ledger of the games, we'll just stick with the NFC right now, but it starts with a bang and land at Philly on the six. How about the last two teams to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl head-to-head -to, -head to start the season? The Falcons, they didn't win it. Philadelphia did. And then how about this for a second game? San Francisco at Minnesota. In normal years, it doesn't get as much attention, but how about now? Jimmy Garoppolo leading the 49ers to take on now Kirk Cousins, Minnesota Vikings. Anything else there from the NFC Week 1 catch in your eye? Well, I think the Dallas Cowboys of Carolina, that definitely does because the Cowboys are trying to get back to the playoffs. Dak Prescott, full season of Ezekiel Elliott, and of course, number one, the big man, Cam Newton, will welcome them to Charlotte. And to finish things off, the last game of the season openers, the Los Angeles Rams, last year's revelation, taking on John Gruden's Oakland Raiders. How about that? He's going to lead this for his running back. It's complete. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up second down. But it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Now a handoff to Miller. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit, thanking them for that much space to rumble. Keep it with Miller on first down. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Devin McCourty brings him down. And he had a nice play there from his free safety position to hold him to nothing. And, Brandon, remember when the free safety was always back away from the line of scrimmage? That's changed. They always <laughs> that changed in a big way. The way we see it now, they're almost mirrors between the free safety and the strong safety. One will be up, one will be back, or sometimes both will be in the same spot. On that play, free safety was there, no game. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. He's able to rattle off six on the carry, and that'll get him to third and four. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Texans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. Down! 
From the gun, here's Watson. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Holding offense. So a decent game. He's still third and nine on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? Third and long, it's Watson. They find some open field here. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. It's a gain of seven, and that'll bring up fourth down. Here's Shane Leckler now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is taken at the 23. 45 yards, that's what the punt goes for. Five on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And two interceptions thrown here in this first half. You hear it, no matter the sport, they say the great athletes, they can kind of have a short-term memory, but that's easier said than done. It is easier said than done, but I played with a guy who threw two interceptions in the first quarter of a really big game we were playing. Johnny Unitas? And no, not, not quite at that <laughs> level and not at that age. But I remember I was looking, going for the age. I remember looking over at him, and he was smiling. And I thought, what is he smiling about? It's because he had enough confidence in himself that uh, that was a fluke. And he went out and played pretty well the rest of the day. He finds Dorsett. It's complete. Ten yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. That time a slant, Brady in general on those quick hitters, he just releases the ball so fast. He does, and he's so accurate, but most of the time, he wins before the ball's even snapped by his pre-snap read. Finds out where the defense is and delivers it to the proper place. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back to Foxborough after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. Here's Brady. He'll complete this one to Barrios. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 15 yards on that one, and New England has a first down. To throw is Brady. He completes it right side of the way. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll make it second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Brady to throw on second down. Oh, he's got him in wide open, complete. And he's going to be taken down, but not before reaching the 15-yard line. Offense. That's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? 
Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Now Brady throwing on second down. This one left side cut by Barrios. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. New England on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and six. Again, it's Brady. Open man to tackle. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Brady's got his guys first and ten, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. On first down, Brady. Incomplete. It's been my observation, there's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Brady will try again on second down. And it's caught by Gronk for a pass touchdown. Rob Gronkowski, 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Patriots are back within a score. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room? This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, full half to be played. Goskowski with the extra point, and that'll cut it to three at 10-7. A drive that time of six plays, and it ends with a New England touchdown. Goskowski now out to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And a look now at Lamar Miller. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. 
How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. hardly got a chance to catch their breath after the quick turnover, but I doubt they're complaining much. Especially with the field position they get to start with. I wouldn't be complaining either. I'd want to get right back out there and get after them because now you have an opportunity to make a big play. I'd say let's be aggressive and go after him. Switching gears for a second, halfway through the preseason. Any big takeaways that you've seen so far, Charles? Now just a few come to mind. Number one, the roster of 90 that stays that way throughout preseason, I think is a boon for every team because you can practice a little bit better, get a few more things done because you have more bodies, and those guys get to get on tape for four preseason games. So I think that's really good. The other part is normal execution, struggle a little bit early in the season guys trying to get it back together and last but not least the practice of coming together with another team two joint practices before a preseason game becoming more and more widespread and you're getting a lot of really good competition and practice with the best versus the best from each team Texans up front. In comes the flag. False start. Offense. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think Still you're exactly down. right about that. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. The Texans were penalized 124 times last year, third most in the NFL, and now they come up first and 15. Four down, four down. Ten, A shotgun snap for Watson. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Watson now on second down. Fuller brings it in over the middle. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock.
Watson now 11 of 16 through the air. It's first and 10. Now a first down throw. Watson. And his throw here is incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Throwing again is Watson. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Griffin. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Down, it's Watson. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. He was looking to get it to his running back, Lamar Miller. And that'll bring up second down. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Tenth carry now for Lamar Miller. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. So we have reached halftime here. It's the visitors, the Texans, out in front as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams as they've already made their way back out of the locker room. So to bring you the story of the second half, let's get you right back out to Brandon Godden. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Tom Brady leads the offense out for their next possession. And he's looking to take much better care of the football here in half two after three first-half interceptions. We don't have to just look strictly at the numbers here. You know what else happens to a team when you turn it over three times like that? It erodes confidence in you, and it erodes confidence in the offense. And now you have the defensive guys looking over and saying, what is going on here? And instead of playing for the team, they're playing angry and mad at their teammates. So Brady and the Pats take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Wait, 20! Throwing on first down is Brady. And Gronkowski's got it, complete over the middle. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch, it's second and eight. I'm guessing, partner, that if we're in the huddle with the Patriots right now, there's not a single guy that thinks they have any chance of coming back in this one, especially not with Tom Brady. There. Yeah, who's Tom Brady? What's he done in the past as far as comebacks are concerned? They're down right now, but that can evaporate quickly with him in the huddle.
So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Wait, 20. Go, go. They'll run it now out of the gun. White's got a first down and more as he'll get this one up to the 44-yard line. 17 yards there for the Patriots as they've got themselves a first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of their yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Second and two. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. They like to run crossing routes because they want to hit the receivers on the go, get them the ball, and keep them moving. How about when you hit a tight end that way? Okay, the receivers are going to run past you most of the time. The tight end, they can do their damage a different way, break a few tackles, and really scatter some people, can't they? here on first down looking left sideline incomplete the former bill chris hogan the intended receiver and now it's second down a pretty good coverage there and both of these defenses they've had good coverage throughout this one no doubt about it and in today's nfl where we're used to a bit more scoring this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build who's going to make Wait, the big 20. play Wait, 20. Looking back to the air on second down, it's Brady. This will be caught inside the 10. And he carries this one all the way down to the 9. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Well, even after all those interceptions, he's not deterred, still confident to go deep at work there. I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply. If things go wrong, you still act like you're the best player out on the field. You still carry that supreme arrogance with you and continue to fire the ball. I've seen guys have games like this, and this is where you find out if you're great or not. Can you overcome some interceptions and still lead your team to victory? seven that time second goal seeing that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends especially the ones running around the nfl nowadays makes me glad i didn't make it in that league i would have a really difficult time but now you get to sit up here with me yeah and that's fun isn't it and what a really nice game right there on first down for them brings up a nice second down for them they'll try and pound it in with burkin and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make it third and goal. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. 
Brady now on third and goal. And take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Philip Dorsett, a five-yard touchdown. And the Pats able to cash in for six. All drives that result in points hurt a defense. But when they are the sustained variety, play after play, and they just can't get off the field and stop them, that can be demoralizing. Extra point try for Goskowski. Goskowski, the extra point. And the lead is now 14 to 10. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it's finished off by a Pats touchdown. Koski now out to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here's the Texans offense now readying for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Get this up only to about the 33. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. That's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. They'll run with Miller, and he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to throw up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. The Texans on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and seven. From the gun, here's Watson. He finds his target, Fuller. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A pickup of 11 at a Texans first down. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot in what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. He's got four. And he's brought down. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, the receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Single, single, Green, the line. Green, the line. 
They go play action here on first down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And a little bit of good fortune there. He wasn't able to get it back, but he did have a teammate on the spot able to retain possession for them. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. On second down, here's Watson. Griffin's got it, middle of the field. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. A nice pick up there, 19 yards. And they're set up better for third. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Holding offense. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Here's Shane Leckler now as he's on to punt for Houston. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. The spotlight now focuses on the quarterback, and that's Tom Brady. On one hand, as we look at some of his struggles with the three interceptions, he's got to be upset. On the other hand, they're still winning this game. So how does he take care of the ball the rest of the game? That's what his teammates are interested in because... They pick things up for him throughout. You got to look over the defensive side, the kicking game. Those guys have made it work for him. Now his goal, not mess up anything else down the stretch. Yeah, forget about those three picks. Move on. Brady and the Patriots now, first and 10, right at the 30. Hey, hey, got three, got three. Wait, 20. Wait, 20. Get get Brady now on first down. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And they get him down takes it across the 40-yard line. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Now Brady. He's going to air it out for Dorsett. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Going to give this one to Burkhead. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Jadavian Cloudy there on the stop. 
Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Throwing is Brady on third down. And he's got an open man. It's Gronkowski. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. He's up now to 80 yards receiving in the ball game, And he's got a first down. And now some teams use the running game just to bludgeon people. I think that Brady to Gronk does the exact same thing for them. Long, short, medium. They know how to connect. In ways that sort of revolutionized the quarterback tight end relationship. They can go, as you, you've told me before, they go medium, they can go short, they go long. And the way that Gronk is used, he's not just a tight end. Oftentimes they'll put him on the backside of formation as a single wide receiver, and he runs routes exactly that way. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. He's having a nice game through the air. His decision-making's been really good. Solid there again. Just seeing nothing downfield goes underneath. Nice game. How about the patience? Because when you're having a big game through the air, you're looking for those chunk plays, those big ones downfield. Instead, as you noted, takes the check down, dumps it off, gains good yardage anyway. Really well executed. Brady now to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Cordero Patterson, the one he was hoping to get it to. And that takes us from second to third down. Looked like he tried it all there. Tried to use some physicality, right? Tried to use some footwork, some head fakes. But he was covered the entire way. Dogged in every step. That forced the incompletion. No separation at the end of the route. The offense on third down tonight, they've been excellent. Six for seven. They're looking at third and a few inches. Now flags come in. Looked like one of the Patriots might have moved. False start. Offense. That's going to set them back five yards. Still third down. New England on third down. They've been excellent. Six for seven. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. And now movement again, and they'll march even further backward. False start. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves them back five. Still third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. Open man there is Patterson complete. And he's going to be taken down, but not before reaching the 15-yard line. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. So they did not bring pressure, and turns out probably a bad idea. Yeah, he had time to stand in the pocket and deliver a strike. So I'm wondering if they're going to note that, and next time just go ahead and bring that pressure. was still a corner to play. It's first and ten. Into the red zone. It's Brady. That's complete. Right around the end. And here he'll get it down to the seven. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call him an extension of the running game. And it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. 
Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Hey, hey, wait, 20. Wait, 20. Wait, we got. And they'll go on the ground. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Rex Burkhead taking it in from seven yards away. And the Patriots add six to their lead. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give him a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with, with great dispatch. Extra point good by Goskowski, and that makes it a 21-10 game. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And in the end, it's capped off by a seven-yard run. Koski now out to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Deshaun Watson of the Texans offense trot back out there. He's hoping to channel his first half play. They had the lead at halftime, was playing well. Flip the script here in the third quarter a little bit. I think he misses the Pee Wee days, you know, <laughs> when you just got the orange slice yeah. at halftime, right? <laughs> and remember, weren't any real adjustments then, right? You weren't looking at some tape, right? You weren't looking at stuff off of the, the surface tablets. You just went back out and played. Right now, maybe the adjustments have caught up to him. Uh, we'll see. Maybe he just needs a couple orange slices here for this drive. Ah! Ah! A handoff running left his middle. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Adrian Claiborne, the one who makes the stop. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. Play action for Miller. Now Watson. And this one is incomplete. The pro bowler, DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver. Third down here. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. The Texans on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and ten. And he finds his man, Griffin. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. That'll give him 60 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Foxborough. It's Texans football, but they trail here as we get started in the fourth quarter. Watson now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. On first down, Watson. Broken tackle. Pass incomplete. Had an open man that time. They end up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Down. Green, down. Green, down. On 
Second and ten, Watson fights off the defender. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll make it third down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. The Texans on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and four. To the air yet again, Watson. In the heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Devin McCourty picks it off. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. Well, you're trailing. It's the fourth quarter, and you've got to throw the football. But the defense knows this, too. So they're just going to sit back, bring in an extra defensive back or two, the old nickel or dime strategy, Brandon, and wait for you to put that bad boy up for grabs. And this one winds up being intercepted. Patriot offense set to take over again. And they had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. Very good starting position for the Patriot offense as they come up first and ten. So after the INT, it's Brady. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Zach Cunningham, tough to handle on that blitz. He gets him for a loss of five. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. And they'll go with a ground attack here. The tackle that time by Zach Cunningham. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. To throw on third down, Brady. And able to find Dorsett. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in his performance. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory as they're down to the 29-yard line. Wait, 20! Wait, 20! Wait, 20! Wait, 20! On first down, Brady. Incomplete. Sometime in this fourth quarter, someone on defense is going to have to step up and force a turnover. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll fall forward to the 29-yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Here's Brady. And that's going to be caught for a Patriot 
Patriot touchdown. Braxton Berrios, 29 yards. And the Patriots add on to their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is it bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Goskowski with the extra point, and the lead is up to 18 now. So the drive there took six plays, and it ends with a New England touchdown. Goskowski now out to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And now out comes Houston. and will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Wide open receiver complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? down throw Watson and it pops free the collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down another wayward pass you know things started out poorly in this game and to be frank they just really haven't gotten much better and all that does is embolden the secondary they feel good about what's going on and they just play better and better so after the incompletion on first now second and ten Throwing again is Watson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. The Texans on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. This is third and ten. Watson looks to throw again. And now another one thrown incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. We got trips over here. Trips over here. Hey! Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Open man is Miller. He's got it. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. Now, no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. We know it's tough enough to pick up first downs on third down plays. But when you go for it on fourth down, sometimes you're actually just praying. And on that play, the prayer was answered. Three. 
So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 down at the 31. Down. Blue 80. Blue 80. Ah. On first down, it's Watson. The hookup on the right side to Hopkins. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 more on that one and another first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him think. By that yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. And then he curls back inside for the completion. up there and it'll bring up a second and nine that play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine we used to call him the trash man his ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny and that's exactly what you want from your mike linebacker they'll run it now out of the gun and he stopped immediately there Officially, no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. But it was stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to them the rest of the game. The Texans on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This is third and eight. From the gun, here's Watson. It's hauled in by Ellington. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. A shotgun snap for Watson. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Jonathan Jones that time, the one who got a hand in, knocked it away. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys free. They have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. A line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. Second and goal, here's an option point left. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that is going to set up third and goal. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Down. Green to nine. Green to nine. Now Watson on third and goal. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Able to hold him to just two yards, and now it's fourth and goal. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. Field goal does you no good, so they're going to stay out there and go for it on fourth. Down. Green to nine. Green to nine. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. 
And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt, and the Patriots' defense is going to take over on down. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. This is Burkhead. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football. But they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, this is my theme of Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And again, they run with Burkhead. And a very short pick up there across the 15 to the 16. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The offense on third down tonight, as close to automatic as you can get. Nine out of ten. They're looking at third and a few inches. By 20! They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage. The stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. on the play back at his own 19 yard line a loss of a full three yards and now it's second down Brandon it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter they're gonna have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball made it very difficult right there now they need to repeat that effort yeah bring seven eight nine whatever it's gonna take to slow them down Try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Now it looks like a pickup of six. That leaves him with seven yards to go on third down. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So the Patriots with a football as we get you reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Now a 
first down carry. It's Hill. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Menardrick McKinney there to make the stop. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter. Looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips. They're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it out. And we've got them now. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Not a whole lot of room to maneuver there, and I think that's because everyone took care of their responsibilities, filled their gaps, held their place. No place for him to run. Yeah, it looked good. Everything got funneled to the nose tackle. They swallowed him up. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Patriots winners here at home as we say so long from Foxborough.